Since 2011, Congress has repeatedly introduced a bill that would let 9-11 victims sue the government of Saudi Arabia. And just days before the 15th anniversary of the attacks, it finally passed in both the House and Senate. Many allege that not only did Saudi nationals and government officials have a role in the attacks, but that the United States has worked to hide Saudi involvement. So is there any proof of Saudi involvement in September 11th? Well, in the final 9-11 Commission report, the U.S. government claimed to have found no evidence that the Saudi government as an institution or senior Saudi officials individually funded al-Qaeda. Nonetheless, 15 of the 19 hijackers, as well as Osama bin Laden, were Saudi nationals, raising serious suspicions over Saudi involvement. For several years, an alleged 28 classified pages from a 2002 congressional joint inquiry into 9-11 were suggested to contain direct evidence of this Saudi involvement. And in fact, when the pages were finally released in 2016, they stated that, quote, while in the United States, some of the September 11 hijackers were in contact with and received support or assistance from individuals who may be connected to the Saudi government, as well as suggesting that, quote, Saudi government officials in the United States may have other ties to al-Qaeda and other terrorist groups. But despite these vague statements in the released documents, the current White House press secretary maintained that there was still no evidence that the Saudi government and senior Saudi officials actually funded al-Qaeda. Still, these pages are not the only alleged evidence presented by those who believe there was Saudi involvement. In 2012, two former U.S. senators testified that they had seen classified information confirming the allegations against Saudi Arabia. One senator referred to Omar al-Bayoumi, who before the attacks was listed by the U.S. government as a suspected Saudi operative living in the United States. In 2000, al-Bayoumi allegedly befriended two of the eventual al-Qaeda hijackers and helped them find an apartment, which he co-signed for. Two months before the attacks, he left the United States for the U.K. Perhaps suspiciously, one of al-Bayoumi's close associates, Osama Basnan, was reported to have been receiving regular payments from the wife of Saudi Arabia's ambassador to the United States. According to memos released by the National Archives from the 9-11 Commission, al-Bayoumi may have even held ties to terrorist groups. Nonetheless, these claims are categorically denied by the FBI, and until recently, the United States has been reticent to allow 9-11 victims to pursue Saudi Arabia in court. In 2002, families of 9-11 victims, calling themselves Families United to Bankrupt Terrorism, put forth a lawsuit for $116 trillion against Islamic and Saudi businesses and individuals. Therein, they accused members of Saudi royalty of actively supporting and funding al-Qaeda and Osama bin Laden. However, in 2008, the U.S. Court of Appeals for the Second Circuit refused to hear the group's case, citing the 1976 Foreign Sovereign Immunities Act, which prevents U.S. citizens from suing foreign countries. The bill that was just passed through Congress removes several restrictions from the act, allowing victims' families to sue Saudi Arabia. Although the legislation has cleared the House and Senate, President Barack Obama fought against it and has threatened to veto. White House officials have warned that Americans overseas may be at risk of retaliatory legislation by Saudi Arabia. The Saudi foreign minister warned Congress that the country may withdraw as much as $750 billion of its assets held in the United States to avoid the seizure of funds by potential lawsuits. But even with this bill passed, and despite many suspicious links between Saudi nationals and the 9-11 attacks, there may not actually be any proof to help 9-11 victims' families. With Saudi Arabia's shaky record of sponsoring terrorism and human rights abuses, naturally many Americans have developed a distrust for the country. But the U.S. and Saudi governments heavily rely on each other militarily and economically, so it's not surprising that the U.S. is seemingly eager to defend its ally. The alliance between Saudi Arabia and the U.S. has been consistently uneasy. Watch this video to find out what is keeping them together and what might tear them apart. The heart of the relationship between the U.S. and Saudi Arabia is oil. The United States imports more than a million barrels of Saudi oil a day, making up 13% of their total oil imports. Thanks for watching Seeker Daily. Don't forget to like and subscribe so you get new videos from us every day.